Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Ah, uh, here we go again with Bill Maher. You guys know that I'm no real fan of Bill Maher. I think he's arrogant, close-minded, elitist, out of touch. I think he's emotional, and his personal hatred and vendetta for Trump make him simply an unreliable analyst and voice in the current political space. But you know what? At least he hasn't gone completely overboard. And to be frank, there's not too many people like that who currently remain on the left-wing side. It sounds crazy, but Bill Maher is a beacon of rationality and occasional common sense in the world of the left, and so I gotta at least give him that, you know? And here we go again, Bill Maher continues to be the deliverer of bad news, inserting a little bit of reality into the delusional world of the left, and boy oh boy his latest segment was an absolute blow to the copium blue anon leftist sphere. They all want to deny reality, the reality that Kamala Harris is plummeting in real time as we see her, but I guess Bill Maher ain't denying-ish if you know what I mean. Let me show you guys some of these moments from his latest show. Then of course, let's build on it. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So like I said, I mean, you exist on social media. You hear all of these leftists continuing to gloat of how great Kamala Harris is doing. And then of course, there's reality. It's 25 days before the election. And I gotta say, it's not looking that great for the Democrats. I mean, uh, this is not a good sign. You know, when you have an African-American candidate, you probably shouldn't be having to shore up your support among black men, but that's what's going on. Tim Walls is headlining a voter engagement event tonight with black men. Uh, who better to connect with young black men than Tim Walls? <laughs> because apparently Michael Bublé was unavailable. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kim Kardashian's like, hello. <laughs> but, no, uh, Obama even came out yesterday to scold. I mean, he was he was scolding. Well, I don't know. He at the last week, month of the convention, he was no scolding. Now he's scolding. <laughs> he was saying, "You got to vote for Harris." But of course, for some young, especially the younger black men, it's a tough choice. Harris is African American, but Trump has a sneaker line. So I was mentioning in the monologue, there's some sobering statistics for the Democrats this week about the election, which is only a little over three weeks away. I'm taking this from Andrew Sullivan's column. He says, at this point in 2020, Biden, uh, with far fewer resources than Harris has, was 10 points ahead of Trump. And in 2016, Hillary was six up. And she is only 2.6 up. Pennsylvania, Biden was up seven at this point. She's up one. Michigan, Biden was up eight and she's tied. Now, we're all in our bubbles, okay? Um, and that's one reason I'm glad you're here because a lot of people are saying, I don't care about any of this. How could anyone think about voting for Trump? And that's why you're here, Buck, to answer Thank you. that question. Thank you. And we're gonna get to that. But it does not seem like she is closing the deal. This week she did a media blitz yeah. uh, of, she went to Howard Stern and Stephen Colbert and The View. Uh, places where, you know, I would say the ass is pre-kissed. <laughs> am, am I wrong? No. Um, no. Did, did that help or hurt? No, it, it, I think Kamala Harris just had the worst week of her campaign so far and has been trending downward for quite some time now. Donald Trump at this point, I think is very likely to almost certain to win the election, and I appreciate the opportunity to tell people why, I'll remember that by the way, why that is. Um, and I think there are two things that are weighing her down. First of all, what led up to her campaign, just, and I'll give a quick, I know it's four years, but I'll give a quick version of it. Uh, Kamala Harris has to explain, while she's a part of the Biden administration, second in command, you had some of the worst statistics you could possibly imagine as a politician. Worst in, hold on, I'm gonna get there. Worst inflation in 40 years while Biden is president. First time you have over 100,000 opioid deaths while Biden is president. Probably the worst open border in the history of the country. Eight million at least, and that's not including the half a million a year that are gotaways. So roughly 10 million people you could call it in four years entering illegally, almost all of whom are going to stay. Now, she doesn't want to throw Biden under the bus for this, and she didn't want to tell everybody that he's a dementia patient, so she decided that she was going to go along. It's just the facts, everybody. You get mad at me. Okay. She decided that she was going to go along with this until it was no longer possible because of the debate, 
And that's what she inherited. I haven't even gotten to her campaign yet, right. but I can't. Well, and there you have it. You know, it always starts off the same, right? We're doing our analysis, and I try to be as fair as possible. I tend to give Donald Trump a little bit more benefit of the doubt in terms of my polling analysis, but I do that not because I'm partisan, not because I'm delusional, but more so because the polls have been wrong and generally are wrong. Of course, 2020 was a little bit of an exception, so it's harder to do that now. But you get what I mean. I try to analyze the numbers as effectively as possible and as honestly as possible. And so usually, you know, we tend to be on trends pretty quickly. Trends that the left, of course, denies and claims are mega chudcopium, or they go as far to say conspiracy theories. That's when you know they're really losing. And then, of course, reality tends to kick in probably within a month to two month delay. And then all of a sudden, they start sounding the alarm bells and saying all the things that we've been saying. We go from conspiracy theorists to, I guess, trendsetters, right? And here we go again. Same exact thing. Bill Maher's pointing out what we've been saying. Everyone wants to sing Kamala's praise how great she's doing in the national polling, but on the average, she's been up by, what, two points? Nationally? That's not a path towards victory. That's a path towards disaster. And I've been saying that since day one. Even during the initial media blitz where everybody was panicking. It's time to get real serious. Kamala Harris is a serious threat. Remember all those people freaking out on Twitter? I kept calling them out. Remember all the Ron DeSantis people coming out of the woodworks? I told you Trump was unelectable. I mean, there was some serious panic going on, but I kept saying she's up two points nationally. And in the Rasmussen polls and Trafalgar polls, we're still seeing the exact same results. What's the panic? Joe Biden, same time during the 2020 election, was up nine points, seven points. I mean, she started to crater towards the end. I think she was up like 3.8 or roughly four points in the average right ahead of election day, but still better than Kamala. And if you looked at the swing state polling data, you know, back then, if you were doing analysis, you would probably think, man, there's no way Trump can win this. He's behind big time everywhere. But now this is the outlook. I mean, look at the RCP average just for top battleground states. Trump has now taken the lead in the average in every single single state except for Wisconsin. And to be honest, Wisconsin looks like it's trending towards Trump. And again, it's a state where Trump is expected to do better than the polling averages are indicating. Look at October 12th, 2020. Biden was up 6.3 in the average. We can go ahead and take a look simply just by clicking the button and look at this. Biden was up by 11, 10, 8, 8. Huge, astronomical leads. And in the end, what ended up happening, even with all the Democrat electioneering, let's call it, I think Joe Biden took the state of Wisconsin by 13,000 votes, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check that. A little more than 13,000. 13,000 might have been Georgia. Just a little bit over 20,000 votes. A 0.6% margin. So the polls on average showed Biden winning by nearly seven points, but the actual result was 0.7. There was a 6% Biden favored error in the aggregate data. I mean, what does that tell you? That tells you that now with Kamala Harris leading in the average by 0.3 and likely even less as we get closer to election day, if the polls are wrong like they were back in 2020, Trump could take the state by over six points, theoretically. And this is the outlook that Democrats are celebrating. You people out of your damn minds, you're delusional. You're so delusional that Bill Maher looks like the rational one. <laughs> it's actually insane. Bill Maher is the common sense guy. Not because he is, he's an emotional wreck, but because you know, the rest of you leftoids have freaking lost the plot. And the copium this year is just incredible. I mean, I really don't think they realize how bad the outlook is for them. I'm not saying this election's over, Trump's gonna win, but it's just not looking good. And it's crazy to me that the left is looking at all this polling data and thinking, oh, we're on track for victory. I don't know, I don't think so. And speaking of this incredible copium, I think the craziest copium of all is coming from all the early ballot data. We're getting some early mail-in ballot data coming out of a lot of states here, which Democrats are obviously overperforming in. And so you got all these leftist analysts all over X tweeting stuff like, oh, we're doing so well in early voting. But again, they're not drawing back to historical data. Sure, Democrats are ahead, but Democrats are far behind where they were in 2020, where the election, the Electoral College, was only won by 40,000 votes. I keep seeing tweets like this. Data from Target Smart suggests that Democrats are running away with early voting. This is consistent with data showing robust turnout in overwhelmingly Democratic Detroit and Philadelphia. Oh, we're running away with the early vote. But that isn't the case at all. Michael Pruzer has been doing some incredible work, and pretty much across the board, we're seeing Republicans actually overperform in early mail-in voting. North Carolina early voting update. Regular voter registration is now closed in North Carolina, and this was the net change over the last seven days. Republicans plus 11,300, Democrats plus 5,400, others plus 14,700. And on the return side, 
We're still on track to finish with about a Democrat plus eight return edge over Republicans. Plus eight. You don't need a degree in statistics or you don't need to be a big brain political analyst to realize that a plus eight early voting advantage for Democrats is abysmal considering what we saw in 2020. And we're seeing the same thing in Pennsylvania. He says, I've been tracking PA absentee requests and returns since the primary in 2020. And today was the first time in just over four years that Republicans outrequested Democrats in mail absentee for the previous day. He breaks down the total requests here as he's been tracking from mid-September. And look at the breakdown, 61% Democrat and 27% Republican. That's significantly down from the 2020 results, where Democrat requests were at 73%, and Republican at 19. And back during the 2022 midterms, where Democrats were at 69% and Republicans at 21. Democrats are claiming these numbers are good for them, but obviously that isn't the case at all. Democrats are lagging behind where they were in highly contentious, extremely close elections. And just to make matters worse on top of that, mail-in ballot requests across the board are down, meaning the early mail-in ballot vote is going to be less significant this time, theoretically, than it was then. And so you got Democrats underperforming in early voting, then you got Republicans who are going to flood the polls on election day. I don't know. Doesn't exactly seem like a recipe for success now, does it? That's the reality, and it's becoming undeniable. And now you got leftist talking heads like Bill Maher essentially sounding the alarm. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.